Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And again, I hope we all had a good turkey day and everybody ate too much like I've done and whatever. And then now we're going to be going on diets, the whole nine yards, whatever that means, drink more water and all this, that, and the other. But anyway, but we, we're right into the festive era, if you will. We've got Christmas coming up and this, that, and the other. So watch yourself. Watch the indulgement aspect of it and whatever. But, uh, in, but do enjoy. Okay. Well, with that, as you know, I always open up with uh, my visuals that I have on, the, the Vietnam uh, cap that I wear and whatever, just basically trying to focus on some of the vets and getting those vets to the VA. A lot of times you see folks on the street corners and whatever saying that they are GIs or whatever. Hey, if you can, uh, you know, pick them up and take them down to the VA. Don't give them the monies and then let the VA handle this aspect of it. And in all due respect, even though you're, they're not vets, pick them up, take them down to maybe to Providence or whomever, to another agency or whatever, and to see if they can, these folks can get help because it's, it's a dangerous situation. It's not good and whatever. So do what, do what you can, okay? So with that, as usual, I've got I've got quite a program today. Uh, uh, the You Choose Education Forum, which we will, by, by the way, we'll be focusing on at least once or twice a month, for that matter, uh, on this as far as the Oregon Voters Digest is concerned. They're going to be bringing us some excellent issues that we'll be discussing, which is very very important because often we've got we've got social media out there right now, folks, and we've got as as one would say, the old adage of the military was KISS, keep it simple, stupid, and. We've got to understand what's going on in the bulk of you out there, 99 percent of you really don't know what's going on. You see the you see the social media, you see the media aspect of it. And right in front of you, the next thing you know, all of a sudden uh, the kid walks in the door and said, Mom, Mom, I'm, I'm pregnant. So what do you do now? OK, so that's going to be the subject we're going to be talking about today. I.e., we got social media, and there's all sorts of things in social media. But again, from you choose the education forum, there are many areas there that, that, as far as I'm concerned, I'm so excited about working very closely with you choose, part of the organization and whatever. And we're going to try to, if you will, get down to the point where we're going to be talking about solutions and how do you deal with this very sophisticated era that we're into at this point in time. Okay, that I've got two guests here today with me. I've got Channa. You've seen Channa before, Channa Cox, and she's a you choose. She's she's a you choose founder. And very much involved in this whole process, and then you got Herb, and you've seen Herb before. Herb, Herb Gray, he's a he's a he's a he's a local attorney, attorney at law, and he, he and I we've had some very interesting subject matters. We've talked we have. about very positive, yes. <laughs> good solution stuff. We're going to continue to do that too, Herb. We got some things we want to talk about, and uh, in fact, I'll just end, I'll end of this at this point in time. I'm going to be talking to Herb a little bit about the about the whole issue that we're we're talking about now with Mr. Brown and that that whole issue. And we're going to be talking about that, trying to see whether or not we might put something together from a local perspective through you choose, Natalie. Okay. So today what we're going to do is that we're going to talk about an area that um, that uh, a lot of folks don't talk about. We've talked about about this in this in this on this show, i.e., babies having babies. You know that's where we are today, folks. I mean, we got a lot of young people that are out there that are basically being asked to be adults, and a lot of the introduction, if you will, of, of some of the issues of becoming an adult. In most cases, they don't have the background, and next thing you know, they're, they're, they're sitting with all sorts of things. When you go to social media, you never know what's going on. And in the home life, et cetera, education system, on and on and on. But we're going to talk about sex. We're going to be talk, basically talking about sex. And that's a broad range of deal, but we're going to kind of focus in on, on some specifics. And naturally, when we talk about the education form and whatever, uh, we've got government in, that's very, very much involved in sex. It can be in the form of the, our education system and the like and whatever. So that's the area we're going to be. I mean, I've sort of given you a general perspective. It's pretty large, but we're going to hone it in with these two folks, and we're going to get it down to the bottom line in terms of what we're going to be talking about. And we're talking about the sexual culture. That's that's a, that's. A, I think that was a good piece. I got that from the, the introduction, that, and I chatted with both of these folks. The sexual culture, what does that mean? And uh, in fact, why don't we open up with that, just kind of a, a little def definition of what sexual culture is all about. And then we'll get into our mainstay. Well, um, I think that the sexual culture over since when Bruce and I were kids has changed enormously. Uh, and I think everybody knows that. When we were kids, uh, the number of children born out of wedlock in the United States was 3%. Now it's 40% and twi almost twice that in some minority groups. 
But I don't think people realize the extent to which the culture changed because our kids in K through 12 are being educated to be sexually active at younger and younger ages. And when I went and started looking at what is being taught in middle school to 11 year olds, I had to use a dictionary hmm. because I didn't, and, and Bruce, you said the same thing. Saying, oh, yes. These are terms that we, who have been married decades, mm -hmm. and I think with pretty adequate sex lives, yes, yes. <laughs> had never found the need to know. And at 11, we wouldn't have wanted to know. At 11, when you're, when you're, you're just hormonally a, a basket case, whether you're a boy or a girl, what you want is stability. What you want is identity. You don't want to know the, the nitty-gritty of using mm -hmm. <sighs> these uh, devices. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so, but the, school, the schools have been teaching it, and particularly in Oregon, under the Adolescent Sexuality Conference uh, in Seaside or Comprehensive Sexual Education, the philosophy is, and they say it again and again, the children very young children, 11, 12, younger, will have sex because it's pleasurable. And so the only thing we can do is teach them how to do it relatively more safely. But they're educating them. Uh, even under a course like abstinence, they're educating them on anal, oral sex uh, uh, so that they can do it more safely. Uh, it's, uh, they're depriving, they're stealing childhood from mm -hmm. our kids. Mm -hmm. If I could jump in, I was going to say one other thing that's changed a lot <clears throat> since we were all kids and we're close enough in age, I think right, we can, right. is back when we were kids, everyone assumed that what took place in terms of instruction in this area should primarily happen at home. Mm -hmm. Now the system is set up so the schools are doing it not only to the exclusion of the parents, but often by keeping the parents intentionally out of the process. So everything that Hannah just alluded to is magnified because in large part the parents don't know that it's even going on and it may be contrary to what parents may even teach their kids at home. And the kids in the literature are told again and again that it's much better to consult the school doctor or the school nurse and the best part about doing that is that they don't have to tell your parents what's going on. And that gets carried not only to all kinds of really weird sexual practices, I mean, including things like sadomasochism and bondage, uh, it gets carried through to things like sterilization, uh, where kids can have, can elect to be sterilized, and I think very soon they will be able to elect to have sex change operations without in any way consulting Right. parents but now the the sterilization is already the law in oregon correct you know as part of that i was just going to throw this out there when i think about that informational highway i mean the, the whole intro of introduction that transitioning period i'm trying to go back as far as we can but just that introduction the informational highway as you know that was under naturally the, um, the clinton administration they all go i can still remember the, the fact that the big push about informational highway this is going to be coming into media got me yeah, yeah. This, this is the social media this is it right here and and uh, and I'd, I'd like to make sure we make that point, and then and then I think then another thing I would like to do is I'd like to introduce as a kind of a something for the layperson out there that's very familiar with, here within the Portland Metro area, the Grant High School situation. Yeah. And I'd like for you all to spend a little time on that, if you will, and then put that on the table, and well, then we we'll go from there. Before we delve into that, well, I think sure. it's important for everybody to understand too that it's not just the schools. Right. What we have is again back when we were all kids. Right. Right. Schools were predominantly run locally. Mm -hmm. Now they're much more run by from Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. or even from Salem. Good point. And so a lot of what really leads to the stuff that we're talking about today is a great deal, and I'm talking hundreds of millions of dollars, mm -hmm. in the name of student health, it's being funneled from Washington, D.C., and from uh, through Salem and other places, so that all of these things actually are being encouraged by people a long ways away. Mm -hmm. Um, through funding avenues that most people don't know about, mm -hmm. including, most importantly, parents. And so we have a situation where government is intimately involved in separating kids 
from their parents when it comes to dealing with these issues. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Huh? Oh, I think that that's entirely true. I mean, from the beginning, the, the, the biggest barrier in any totalitarian system, I'm not suggesting that ours is totalitarian, mm -hmm. but the biggest barrier in any state-controlled system to the state having total power over the individual has always been the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so the state wants to, we know, every parent in America knows that traditional ways of raising parent uh, children are now under very sharp scrutiny, even though our grandmothers and our great-grandmothers, everybody used them, and instead we're going to the professionals, and the professionals are giving us sex education and drugs to handle behavior problems and diagnosing our kids in all classes as having this kind of problem or that kind of problem. And, you know, s some of these problems would be solved in my generation if you just put the kid out to work in the fields for four hours a day. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's part of, we are told every day, all the parents are told. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, within my own family, the kids that are in uh, public schools, parents are told, well, you don't really understand what's going on. You have to deal with the professionals. Uh, you, 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 we have to diagnose this as this or that. And kids are being taught. They're not taught good behavior. They're not taught self-control. And without self-control, yes, sex is a problem, but everything else in life is a problem, too. Virtue begins with self-control. Right. Well, you know, now, Herb made the point about that government intervention. And how did that come about? You know, because you know, we got elected officials, like you said, and normally the, under today's criteria, the idea is that, okay, fine, we got this issue, and then I, we go to the elected official, and then that becomes part of the campaign. <laughs> well, uh, except uh, right. that it doesn't become part of the campaign. Okay. That's part of the problem. Okay. There, are, Everybody knows that um, anytime Congress or anybody else passes a law, mm -hmm. and this is true of the state legislature, then those statutes that are passed are passed on to some administrative agency mm -hmm. and they come up with all sorts of regulations. Mm -hmm. And the infer interesting stuff is in the regulations. And I dare say that most people don't pay attention to the regulations that are being uh, issued by government agencies. Mm -hmm. So you have a situation where um, when when this stuff starts to, to burst out into the into public view, all of the seeds for it have been firmly entrenched in the administrative process. And all they have to do, all the government officials have to do, is point to the regulations which say we're supposed to be doing this, and we pass these rules, we put it out for notice and comment and public hearings and everything like that, and nobody came. Mm -hmm. so which then, is not a surprise, but all of the stuff that they're doing okay. is justified by the law that took place in secret. Okay, then, they, then you got the economic side. Who picks up the pathon then? i.e. the economics, the money, right? Yeah. Well, there's an awful lot of ways in which many, many people are making money off yes, this. Yes, yes. Uh, certainly the pharmaceutical companies are making a great deal of money. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the uh, entertainment businesses are making a great deal of money. Uh, and, you know, even the well-intentioned organizations that were set up to deal with things like teen pregnancy or they it's just when you look at the numbers of peep of 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 the costs of these and the costs of mental health for our children now where mental health what what one of my students said that the um that the system is not producing cures, it's producing customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the system is producing basically addicts mm -hmm. of one sort or another that are going to keep the system going. Mm -hmm. They don't want people cured. Mm -hmm. They don't believe people can be cured. Okay. Well, and I mean, there's been a lot of talk in recent years about the, the Affordable Care Act mm -hmm. and a government takeover of health care, all in the name of providing better health, right? Right. right. <laughs> And the same thing is happening with our kids. So in the name of health, 
we have people in Washington, D.C. and people in Salem who are passing regulations and doling out money to other government agencies, to private organizations. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is basically pumping money into this whole system to create the sort of thing that leads to stuff like what happened recently at Grant High School mm -hmm. and the sexting problem at Klatskanai High School that came up last year and so on. And it's all being done by adults with government money. And again, the people who have been left out of it, for the most part, are the parents mm -hmm. who never see or hear any anything about this until it's on the evening news. Okay, let's talk about that. Let's get right into the deal now. What what happened at Grant High School? Well, what, we'll go to Grant High. what happened at Grant High School is that some of the high school students uh, below the age of consent were uh, doing videos of actually having sex in the Grant High School building and just around Grant High School. One of the students involved was very disturbed by this because these went viral and everybody in the world was looking at this and went to the authorities and said, we need help, this is what's going on. The authorities invoking a little known Oregon law said, well, if, you're, if you've done this and if you've distributed it, then you are guilty of child pornography. So rather than looking at the educational system that encouraged uh, internet sex mm -hmm. as a legitimate way of having sex and perhaps safer than actual exchange of fluids, as Cap would put it, Cascades AIDS policy, rather than looking at the people who taught these kids to do that, mm -hmm. they're ac accusing the kids. Mm -hmm. In Klaskenheim Middle School, several girls were c convinced one or two girls, uh, and I think at most three or four, uh, were convinced by one or two boys in middle school, I think, I don't think it was high school, to take nude selfies in very provocative positions. They were told by this, these, this young man that they all thought they were in love with that it would be entirely private, and then he just sent it out over the net and thousands and thousands of people saw this. And when these girls went to the authorities with their parents, and by then these girls were seriously mentally mm -hmm. compromised shot. and shocked and mm -hmm. vulnerable, the authorities said it was the girls' fault. After all, they took the, the selfie. Uh, and they were therefore guilty of child porn. That that has now resulted in a lawsuit, as I understand yeah. it, against the school district. And I think the principal may have left. He's the one that told them that he would not investigate, or he seemed to say that he would not investigate it because it was all their fault. Mm -hmm. But it's not if it's what they are being taught. Right. And and see, a, a lot of the, where, where all this, it didn't really start, but what gave it institutional blessing is the 2009 legislature decided that we needed to have comprehensive K through 12 sexuality instruction. Hmm. Now, you need, we need to break whom? that down. Brought on by whom? Who, well, who, who's the originator? Who signed it? Well, it, <laughs> it was mind. somebody in the legislature <laughs> put together a bill and, and other legislators voted for it. But mm -hmm. you break down the component parts of that. Comprehensive, what's comprehensive sexuality mm -hmm. education? Mm -hmm. Well, that means it covers the waterfront, right? Right. right. K through 12, everybody knows what K means, starting at kindergarten. Right. Wow. Okay, how much sex education does a kindergartner need? And so when the state legislature passes this stuff, then the Oregon Department of Education and the um, Oregon Health Authority and others start passing regulations to implement this. And there are now regulations that specify what kids at all these different age groups are supposed to be taught. Can you give us some examples? Well, and, and it starts with, in kindergarten, um, talking about appropriate and inappropriate relationships and identifying adults that you can trust both within the home and outside the home. By the time you get into elementary age, they're actually demonstrating how to use a condom. Now, how many elementary age kids need to know how to use a condom? And, um, and a lot of it is pushing kids toward different ideas of healthy and unhealthy relationships and who are the adults you can trust and once in a while the regulations mention somebody at home or parents but most of the time it's people at school or other trusted adults so right from the very early age we have a situation where again kids are being uh, 
parents are actually being kind of cut out of the system. And there's more and more identification that the kids, if they need help, go to somebody at school to get this information. So you take the situation at Grant High School or at Klatskanai, where you have kids doing stuff that really wasn't very smart to mm -hmm. begin with, and they come to school officials who pretend that it's a huge surprise when they're the ones that actually have curricula that encourage the kids to do exactly what they did. Well, you you opened up, a, you, I mean, you, you've opened up, a, well, and then I think about the whole porn issue, the porn industry they on are, social media right now with adults. But at the Adolescent Sexuality Conference, the Keystone lecture this year was on how good it is to watch porn with, with your sexual, I mean, there's, you know, you're not one partner at a time mm -hmm. here, but that watching porn is sexually gratifying and it's probably safe, safer than exchanging fluids, but they're making, they're educating kids as early as middle school to watch porn. You talk about who makes money on that. It's the porn industry. Right. Well, and the keynote speaker owns a sex shop in Toronto. Okay, so you don't even have to dig very far if you go onto the internet to find out about him. He's the keynote speaker. And the methamphetamine stuff that Hannah was referring to, that came up at the Adolescent Sexuality Conference. So, you know, in whose universe is it okay to, to promote two kids, middle school and high school, mm -hmm. that, that methamphetamine can actually be a good thing? Because it enhances sexual pleasure. But then, but then you bring up another, another point to it. This whole culture of, of porn. I mean, right now, you know, for instance, if uh, uh, adults, if you will, uh, let's say working, if you will, and all of a sudden, you know, they've got the computer in the front of them, they, and then guess what? They're looking at the kids. This big, this big fusion, if you will, of of the misuse. Yes, but but those are adults, and under our law, what we, I mean, if adults are watching kids, then it is criminal, but. But we introduced it. I mean, that's but what, just, that's what, what we about. are well, that's doing part of it. That's part is of the raising the kids to do it. To do it. And to do it. Right. We are teaching them that this is a good thing to do. And then the adults who are basically taking advantage of it through the social media are basically looking at it while they're working and things. But then they get caught, right. and then guess what? They lose their jobs. and all Well, and see, if you look at the laws that the legislature passed in yeah. 2009 and the regulations that have been issued, they all pay lip service to parents having rights, and parents do have rights. Hmm. They all pay lip service to abstinence, but again, if you're teaching a kid in elementary school how to use a condom, what's the, what's the prevailing message in that? It's not abstinence. And, and so the problem that we have is the law on one hand says therefore certain things, when in actuality they're promoting something different. And the, the difficulty is that today most parents don't know that they actually have the right, if their kids are in school, to see the curriculum. They have the right to ask questions. They have the right to find out what's being taught and to see all of the instructional materials. They have a right to find out who it is that's actually doing the teaching. And there are programs out there, if you can believe it, that involve bringing outside volunteers in to do the instruction in the classroom. It's called the teen outreach program. And the reason teachers don't do that is because it's supposedly got a community service component to it. And what are they teaching? Well, some of the people in Portland who teach in the classroom are Planned Parenthood volunteers. Now, I, the thing is that most people, that, that parents are supposed to be able, they're supposed to know in advance that that's going to happen, mm -hmm. and they're supposed to have the opportunity to opt their kid out of it. What our information shows is a lot of times the parents never get any paperwork, so they never see any notification. They never get the chance to opt their kids out, and when they do find out what's going on and they go to the school, the school will tend to say, well, you're the only one that's complaining. Hmm. Okay. And again, the whole idea is let's keep the parents outside of this so they don't know what we're up to. And I think the, the really troubling thing to me about this whole thing is it's the government actively involved in breaking down parent-child relationships.
That's what frosts me. And they're doing it with tax money. And they have all kinds of private helpers who benefit from it, who are interested um, in being part of this money stream mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's good for them. Mm -hmm. So who are the casualties in the whole thing? It's the family, and most particularly, it's the kids. So how do we get to the responsibility aspect of it? Who's going to be responsible to bring this information out and, and vet whatever we, the, the thing that we're talking about? Well, I think that it's a very good sign that the media, at least in Portland, are now paying some attention to it. They are? KOIN did an excellent... That's uh, Channel 6, right? Channel 6 did an excellent investigative report, I think last week or the week before, on the Adolescent sexual, uh, Sexuality Conference. They showed the material on methamphetamines. They showed the material that uh, instructed young kids to uh, uh, take showers naked with other people and where, and sleep together and do all of these things as a method of abstinence. Mm -hmm. uh, when and they interviewed they interviewed Brad Victor, who has been the uh, head of the or the, the the elder statesman of this movement for probably three decades. When they asked him specifically, what about the literature saying that, you know, put out by Cascade AIDS policy, saying use methamphetamines wisely, um, he said, I will not discuss it. When they showed him the literature that said to children, uh, uh, you know, buy one extra large bottom pajamas and sleep in it together, he said, I won't discuss it. Yeah, and it, the steering committee for this adolescent election sexuality conference, which has been taking place in Seaside in April for a number of years, but if, if you go down the list, it's Cascade AIDS Project, Insight Teen Parent Program, the Oregon Attorney General Sexual Assault Task Force, the Oregon Department of Education, the Oregon Department of Health and uh, the Oregon Department of uh, Health Human Services, the Oregon Health Authority. Um, the Oregon Teen Pregnancy Task Force, Plan Planned Parenthood of the Columbia Willamette, Planned Parenthood of Southwestern Washington, Rapid Music Therapy Services, LLC. <laughs> who the heck is that? I mean, the list goes on, but you notice how many of those right, were government right. agencies? Oh, yeah, 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 so everything yeah. that Hannah's just alluded to, the government is putting out there. Tax dollars are being used to do this. And when some of the recent publicity that came up through Channel 6 and others talking about this, um, the, the, the fact of the matter is that all these government officials tried to pretend like they didn't have anything to do with it. And when it got down to the school district level, with school districts that had allowed their students to go to this thing, mm -hmm. they said, our kids ain't going to this thing anymore. Yes, mm. I think that one thing that the KOI, and, and, and I know that Seattle, CBS handled it in Seattle as well, I think that school districts are waking up uh, and that many, uh, you know, I think 40% of the school districts that went last year with their kids have said that they're not going to go this year. If, you, if they are under enormous pressure from the state to yeah. go because the state will give them money mm -hmm. to cover mm -hmm. all of these things. Um, but if I could jump in yeah, real sure, quick yeah. on it, you know, one of the other things that's going on is because of all this body of law at the federal level and the state level and so on like that, now the Oregon School Boards Association is putting out proposed policies so that local school districts can adopt this. So when, you, um, when those are under consideration, I went to a couple of school board meetings mm -hmm. where this was being discussed and I know so of others. I, yeah. And what happens is when you start reading out of the regulations, they say, no, that's not really part of this. It is part of this. You've got the regulations in front of you. You read a part of them, and then they look at you and they say, well, our teachers would not actually teach that stuff. Right. So why is it in the regulations? <laughs> well, you know, I, I think about it when, when you, as, you're going, as you're going through this piece. Like, like Herb said, it's a government, right, the government. Supposedly yeah. the government is of the people, by the people, and for the people. And normally we identify that person as the elected officials. And I'm just saying we just went through an election aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking the question, what about our Congress, a congressional delegation? What about our senatorial delegation? What about the folks who just got elected? What do you want to bet they don't know much about it? Or if they do, they won't say. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, it, it is not generally recognized the extent to which the federal government is messing with this stuff. So I'm not sure that it's our congressmen and our senators, but it is certainly but that's our. That's where the money's coming from. They should know. 
they should know. Yeah, that, the money. They'll it's get up in Title front of TV money. and tell that. you that they only heard about it when it made KOIN TV. They didn't know anything about the Veterans Administration before that. I mean, they're getting very good at that line, Bruce. Yeah. Well, it's, it's Something really on the order of $400 million a year yeah. in Title X money from the Department of Health and Human Services in the name of health is being passed out to the states and to other grants. They, they actually have grant programs. So Planned Parenthood and other groups, as well as different government entities, can get their hands on part of $400 million. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we want to take a short break real quick, Mike, but, but I, I'm sort of reminded, as far as the local responsible entity that's, that's in this area, so to speak, I think about Congressman Earl Blumenauer. And I, and I see the push with the marijuana situation. Don't get me wrong. I mean, that's, the, that's what the people selected. Part of the same yeah. culture. But the fact of me is there's the big push, but it was all about the economics. Yeah. We're going to make money. But what about the kids? What about, what about the impact of this kind of thing? Well, anyway, I tell you what, we'll take a short break and we'll just jump right back in this, okay? We'll take a short break, folks. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Bouchard, your host here at the Oregon Voters Digest, and we're doing another series, if you're on YouTube, the educational forum aspect of it. And my guest today, we're going to be talking about the, the whole issue of the sexual culture revolution that we're involved in. And uh, if you've missed the show, you can pick it up uh, at a later date. The schedules are shown. And uh, so, but my guest today is Herb Gray and, and, and Chana Cox uh, of the YouTube Educational Forum, if you will. And Herb is a local attorney who's very active, if you will, very an activist, if you will, of trying to respond to some of the issues that we need to respond to here within our society. Okay, well, as we left, we were talking about again, we're talking about sex. We, we reviewed those pieces, but let's talk about some of the, the some of those issues that, that well, probably maybe we ask these folks to really understand the severity of this piece. And one of the questions that I was looking at was, what are the students being taught at the Adolescent Sexuality Conference about? You know, and then there were some areas in like gender identity, sex with multiple partners at young age, abstinence as defined by CAP, and what is CAP, pregnancy as a socially transmitted disease and abortion, safe practice in and anal sex, men and families. I mean, I well, l let's start with gender identity. The new school of thought says that all gender is socially constructed. Hmm. So none of the new th things that are coming out show any sex at all because. It's a judgment whether you're going to be a boy or a girl or something other than a boy or a girl. And it's a judgment that these kids are encouraged to make by the hour. Hmm. Try on girls' clothes now and be a girl. Come back, the same students model this behavior. Come back an hour later and be a boy. Uh, you have to try it to see if you like it. There's also in uh, a, a group even for not for people who want to be asexual. There is uh, a sense that if you don't like the body that you were given, uh, we can help you change your body. And so there's a lot on sex change therapy 
because the idea is is that any notion of differences between men and women, male and female, are socially constructed. So we are not allowed, women are not allowed to think that just because they're women, their sex should come with an emotional component of commitment, which seems to be as old as the history of women. I mean, that's how we got families. And they should emulate this kind of sex with no string attached that men seem to be able to enjoy. The problem with that is that, as, as one person in Scapu School District said, who picks up the pieces afterwards? Mm -hmm. Who picks up the pieces when your 14-year-old daughter comes back pregnant by a guy that she thought she loved? Who, who uh, you know, who puts her back together again? Mm -hmm. Because there is no recognition that women are, that girls are vulnerable in a way that guys just aren't. Uh, and the, this starts, this sort of stuff that Hannah's talking about, starts in the curriculum in elementary school. Elementary school. And you are encouraged to have sex with multiple partners, with all kinds of practices in sex, because you might enjoy them. Anal, oral, it gets well beyond that sadomasochism, bondage uh, is something that uh, Planned Parenthood, you know, try it, you might like it. And that visual, I think that that's part oh, of Oh, yes. Visuals. Oh, yes. Videos. No, um, no, no. Then there's this notion that what um, uh, abstinence is is simply not. I mean, it's kind of abstinence the way Bill Clinton would describe it. Mm -hmm. You know, I did not have <laughs> sex with that woman. Uh, uh, abstinence is well the, in in a in a class for eleven year olds. The student, the teacher is instructed to ask prompting questions in quotes, which include what kind of sex can people have by themselves? What other things might people do to not each other with their mouths? Not eleven mouths. year olds. Not eleven year olds. Eleven year olds. She's reading from the teacher's manual. I'm teaching, manual. Re reading teacher's from the teacher's manual. manual. This is the teacher's manual. Okay, go on. On on how to lead this discussion. That, that they're asking 11, the teachers to lead 11-year-olds through discussions of anal, oral sex, caressing, masturbation. Uh, well, there's also kissing, talking, and grinding. Uh, uh, massage, uh, touching each other's genitals, vaginal intercourse, etc. And... <laughs> These are all discussion. You know, the kids get together and the teachers le ha ask leading or provoking questions to 11-year-olds. That is what is being taught uh, at the Adolescent Sexuality Conference. That is abstinence as defined by these people. Uh, pregnancy is, is of course, uh, listed uh, and thought of as, in some sense, as a curable, socially transmitted disease. Uh, and the way you cure it is by abortion. Uh, and, of course, contraception is, is in fact, th the number of teenage pregnancies is going down in this country. Contraception is very effective. Uh, but the number of children born <coughs> out of wedlock is going up. That's true. So... <coughs> They're teaching safe practices for anal sex, safe practices <coughs> on the use of methamphetamines. I'll let Herb talk. Well, and, and, and to kind of carry this on, you know, there's been a lot of uh, discussion in the news here lately about schools having to change policies to offer bathrooms for transgender students and a lot of controversy over whether students should be allowed to use any restroom that they choose or any locker room they choose. So if you have kids from, that from elementary age are taught that gender is something up here that mm -hmm. you think about, not what you were assigned at birth, and you encourage kids to experiment with both genders, then it's not a very far stretch to assume that some enterprising 14-year-old boy may think it's pretty cool to be in the girls' locker room after PE. Mm -hmm. And most parents just recoil at stuff like that, and yet that is exactly the sort of situation that all of this system creates because everything is equally valid 
and we can't tell anybody that that their orientation or their particular choice is not okay. And so we've created a, a situation where the vast majority of kids are suddenly exposed to situations that most adults would not want to be in. Well, you know, you make another good point when you think about uh, the other thing. That what about the teachers who are taking a few of the a few of the kids home with them? And, you know, you know, sort of like, well, you've been taught these kind of things. Maybe I can show you some other extra stuff. I mean, what am I point? I'm not trying to be funny about this, but yeah. the idea is that you hear all the time about the fact that a teacher might have been uh, inappropriately touching a child or whatever, uh, and then all of a sudden the kid is there doing these kinds of things, then they get caught, yeah. and all of a sudden it's rape. Well, and But look at the case in Houston where it, it, not everything goes because when the ministers in, what, five churches right. got up and said, we do not agree with this, this shared bathrooms and locker mm -hmm, rooms, mm -hmm. what did the mayor of Houston do? Yeah, she turned around and subpoenaed any sermons that they had taught on the subject and private emails between the pastors and members of their congregations that in any way related to any of these types of subjects. And that was just last and month. These, and these were not pastors and churches that were involved in the opposition initially. Well, there, there was, there was a, 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 an initiative to try and repeal an ordinance from the city council. And these five pastors and churches were not even actually involved in that initiative effort. They just spoke up as the, the thing progressed. And they were... Uh, treated with government subpoenas. <laughs> now, fortunately, there was pushback, and ultimately, there there wasn't enough lipstick on the pig mm -hmm. to make it acceptable for the for the city attorney and the mayor in Houston to to continue on with that. So they backed down. But it is an indication of wh where we are today in terms of addressing these kinds of questions. Anybody who speaks up and says, this is out of bounds, is then told they're transphobic or, you know, called all sorts of, you know, hateful names and they're vilified and they're made to appear as if they're, you know, they were born in the 1700s or something. And again, it's the government promoting the message and responding to the people who oppose them. So everything is tolerated except traditional Judeo-Christian moral values. Hmm. Everything. Yes. Hmm. Well, what, now what about what about the kids? I, and when we were coming up, we were encouraged, if you will, to take material home to the parents, if you will. And in some cases, they were told we, it, it set up something, and the parents would go and get that information too. Are the in, in, as part of this program, are the kids encouraged, if you will, to take the to take things to the parents and talk to the parents about this? And are the schools are they set up to? Well, I'll speak as the father of a 17-year-old high school student. Mm. We hardly ever see stuff come home from school. Mm. And part of the reason is much of the homework is done in the classroom. And my guess is, although I don't know this for a fact, that in some of the courses that we're talking about, that homework never, ever leaves the room, the classroom. Mm. And most parents, I think, if... If we were to talk about these kinds of subjects with a group of parents, most of them, well, I can tell you from personal experience, I've talked about this to groups of people, and their eyes are way big around. They can't imagine that this is the sort of stuff that's happening in classrooms. And, you know, again, the few parents that have tried to push back a little bit, they're basically, uh, if they ask to see the curriculum, well, the only copy is the teachers, and the teachers teaching the class, so we can't let you have it. Well, they're right. Well, state law. What about rights? State law says parents get to see it. Yes, right. Not only before instruction, right. but during instruction. Well, and 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 you know, there, we all know that if you go into the average library, there are rows and rows and rows of textbooks and other mm -hmm. materials on the mm -hmm. shelf. Mm -hmm. They've got maybe two or three hundred copies of things. But when it comes to the sex ed curriculum. They've only got one copy? Really? And that that trumps state law saying parents have the right to see it. And for when parents say, I don't want my kid being part of that, they get pushed back on that. Well, we don't have an opt-out form. Hmm. We've actually had to put together suggested opt-out forms for parents to, to use when they're, when they're going to their kids' schools. 
And then they'll say things, uh, uh, again, from the school district that I, that I went to the meetings on, like um, that, uh, that your child will feel excluded or all alone if you don't, what do you, so uh, what, what most of the people in Herb's group or in Parents Rights In have suggested is that you don't go to the school district one parent at a time right. because they're all going to make you feel like you're some sort of a bizarre right. person from the Middle Ages. You go as a group of parents. Yeah. You go as a group of parents. Uh, and it takes enormous courage because all of these people who sit on their advanced degrees tell you they just flat out tell you you don't know what you're talking about. And when it comes to a lot of things like anal sex and sex with multiple partners, we don't know what we're talking mm -hmm. about. We would just as soon not know it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do know that what they are recommending to our kids is going to inevitably result in overwhelmingly large numbers of those kids, uh, and particularly women again, getting very dangerous dangerous socially transmitted diseases well and, and the other thing i was going to say is if you talk to educators mm -hmm. every last one of them will acknowledge that all the research shows that the kids who do best in school are the kids who are supported by their parents at home mm -hmm. and generally the kids who do best tend to be kids from families intact families with a mom and a dad and yet this whole thing that we're talking about is predicated upon keeping parents in the dark and not having them find out what's going on. Now, how does that even fit with good educational theory? I mean, there's just no way. And, and the, what's interesting is when people do find out about this stuff and they do rise up in numbers, what they're finding is that the people who have at least gone along with it, if not promoted it, um, actually are saying, we're not going to do this anymore. So the parents have been, when they're organized, and there's a group of them, have been very, very successful at getting school districts to change what they're doing. Well, tell me this. And we got we got a few more minutes here, and then we're going to probably be discussing this, and then we got to come back. But the thing is, let's, let's start talking about where do we begin to try to cut cut into this culture? What, what do we do to solve this problem? Where, where, do, where does one go? Where does a parent go today? if you will. Is that said? Well, I think that we go to where Herb says to begin with. We go to the school district meetings. We find out. We, we make our voice heard. But we have to do much more to change this culture uh, in the nation as a whole. Okay. Uh, and I think that if we just look at ourselves as a, as a society now, um, we have to... Uh, Look at the people who end up with contented, meaningful, healthy lives and the people who escape poverty. And marriage is the way to go. And, mm -hmm. and this, is not about, uh, this is not about who you marry or even the gender of who you marry. This is about the notion of a settled, stable family for children. You know, I, I think about when you say, where do we go again? I think about the media. You said Channel, uh, Channel 6 was on board, so they give you a piece. Maybe they need to do more. You got Channel 2, Channel 12. Otherwise, if you can't afford Comcast, you can't get all this other stuff, right? Well, I mean, the, the media is generally referred to as the fourth estate, right? Mm -hmm. Right. The right. idea, they shine the spotlight on things. Exactly. And they find out what's going on. That's exactly what's been, been happening here lately. And what we found is that most of this is so indefensible that nobody will defend it. Even Brad Victor said, "I will not discuss it." And Brad is. He is. He's the adole he's the uh, adolescent sexuality coordinator for the Oregon Department of Education. And has been for I think thirty years. Yeah, long time. But any time we got into some of the subjects that we're mm -hmm. talking about, and the, actually showed them the books, right? That they had published. shared the materials with him and so on. He says, "We are not talking about that." Well, is it possible not to maybe get you choose our education form to call this guy and have him come on? On the if show? he won't answer K O I N, he won't answer uh, you choose. Put <laughs> well, yeah. Bruce Broussard in there. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him. <laughs> okay, I will do that. He'll always come back and say this is only about health and preventing pregnancy. Yeah. But it's an issue here. This is a major, major, major issue. Uh, I mean, some of the subjects con uh, talked about at the ASC within these groups 
were things like bestiality. Well, I mean, you what know. Do you, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Well, I think. Sex between people and animals. Okay. Hmm. Yes. Well, I mean, everybody's got to be cleaned. <laughs> but, <laughs> and you shouldn't abuse the animal. <laughs> but um, that, that, that comes up in the yeah. discussion. There yeah. isn't a topic yeah, right, on right, it. Right, 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 right. But certainly one, some of the major uh, issues discussed over and over again on college campuses and, and at the ASC is this culture of uh, getting people drunk and, and, and basically mm -hmm. what constitutes consent mm -hmm. when everybody is dead drunk. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody really wants to know because yes. there is no such thing as consent when you're dead drunk. But now what, kids are dying in sororities and fraternities, yeah. kids are dying all over because of violence that gets out of hand mm -hmm. when there is just too much alcohol. Well, adults created this mess, yeah. okay, and I submit, to echo what, what Hannah said, adults got to fix it. They, you can't have college administrators who pretend it's a surprise that sexual assault occurs on the average college campus because people are drunk. Well, I mean, anybody who's ever been to college knows that that and goes some on. Are, some are part of the problem. So take responsibility. <laughs> and, and you know, everybody needs to get away from ideology or mm -hmm. saying, well, mm -hmm. we have to get, keep religion out of this because, it, you know, schools can't talk about that. It goes beyond all of that. It's about what's good for the kids. Right, right. And it sure as heck isn't what the adults are dishing up in the name of education. Gee. And not only that, but when you look at the K through 12, we have a deplorable K through 12 system. It's not teaching kids to read. It's not teaching them numeracy. It's not teaching the them to make change for a dollar. Yeah, right. But it's cha teaching them all of this stuff. Right. Gee. That's time. That's money. That's effort. Well, like I said, in two years we've got an up upcoming election. It'll be the presidential election during that particular time. So folks are going to have to be uh, re-elected, if you will, especially in the Congress aspect of it. I'm still thinking about the person who represents the people in government, if you will. And, and we can ask them those questions, if you will. And right. Hopefully they will put that uh, IE on that material. But basically, I need to address this issue. We need to start somewhere. I mean, I'm talking about the local officials, especially in the metropolitan area, like in Portland, whatever. Yeah. We got the county commissioners. You know, I, I'm, I, I think about uh, uh, Commissioner Loretta Smith. Uh, she's well known, and she happens to be an African American. You know what I mean? And it does a lot of this. A lot of the problems do exist in the minority community. We got the Hispanic community. I mean, you know, you just go on. You got Earl Blumenauer, for instance. Rather than just pushing the marijuana initiative, maybe that's an issue that he could put together all the groups, if you will, including media, and bring address this issue and bring this up to an area where we can discuss it. Well, it would certainly be a very important thing to do, Bruce. And then Ron Wyden, we got we got Senator Ron Wyden. You know, he's been very responsive in this area, if you will. Again, I mean, we got to get to someone that can take the lead and feel can can be somewhat independent enough to put this stuff on the table. Well, we don't have that. one of the other things that I've talked with a lot of people about is if nobody will share information with you, mm -hmm. you can always make a public records request. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the media is very uh, uh, used to doing me uh, public records requests. Mm -hmm. And I, I dare say if enough people start asking the same questions and trying to get at the same information, pretty soon all the people who are responsible for it are going to realize that they got a, they've got a public relations problem, mm -hmm. if nothing else. Mm -hmm. And even if they don't want to change what they're doing or they want to try and justify it, pretty soon the paperwork will be there mm -hmm. that shows that what they're trying to defend is the indefensible. Good, good, good. And, you know, more people, regular people, have much more power and much more influence than they think they do, but they can't do it by themselves. They need to get together with other people, their friends, and other family members, and they need to work together. And once they start doing that, they'd be amazed at the results that they can get because we've seen some results mm -hmm. just from recent publicity that's been very, very encouraging. Well, it makes it makes a lot of sense, if you will, because like you said, their parents are embarrassed, if you will, the fact that they didn't, they don't know. And in some cases, many of them were involved themselves, you know, sure. yes. and they, during that particular time. So it just makes good sense, if you will, if the media did get in touch. They're getting paid. We got the Oregonian. That's a major newspaper. We got the Willamette Week, if you will. And in some cases, uh, some of that material that they print, 
in many cases tend to encourage these, some of these issues and whatever. And we got the Portland Tribune, we got, we got you know, just on and on, we got, the, we got the minority newspaper, we got the Scanner, you got the Observer, you got the L Hispanic, you got the Asian Reporter. So my point is that they need to get together. Forget about the personality aspect of it. This is a very serious issue, folks. We need to do something about this. Fair? Well, yes, I think it's, it's, it's absolutely true. Uh, but uh, it's also the case that the head of education in the state of Oregon, the man who controls everything now That's since the 2011, That's the is the governor. He is personally in charge of all of this. But unfortunately, they're going to be probably be focusing on the issues with, uh, in all due respect, his first lady. And I, I hate to put it that way. I, I don't want to get caught up in that. But that. But again, my point is that maybe maybe it's right. It's a good time, if you will, to tell Governor Kitzhopper, if you will, here's an issue that he can address, if you will, to take off some of the other issues that he's being you faced bet. with to be governor. If he could solve this problem or get into it and whatever, we, we need, we've got four years. We got four years with this. This is a very important piece. It's our kids. These are the futures, if you will. This is the future of Oregon, right? And, as Hannah has said several times, the key to it here is that the types of behaviors that are being promoted are the things that lead to other problems. I get that. On that particular note, I think it's a good note, and uh, I think we may have to end this conversation at this point in time. Okay. But we're going to bring this back on. I think it's very important, and maybe I'll get together with you, choose. Uh, and see whether or not we might get some speakers along that particular line to continue where we are at this point in time and keep this on the table. I think it's very, very important that we do this. And it's something we can solve, at least in K through 12. That yes. sounds good. Any, any lasting remark? i got about I've, four. I've said it. Sounds good? Okay, good. <laughs> Folks, again, thank you very much. And then, look, take this discussion. Get around the table, if you will. Uh, get, get involved with your kids. Ask them. In fact, ask them the question. Are you being taught that some of the things that were being said here on the show? Share it with your neighbors. Share it with other folks. But get involved with this process. We've got problems. It's a cancer. And we just got, we've got to do something about this cancer. Otherwise, it's going to just evolve us all. We've got the baby boomers today. You're all trying to enjoy your, your retirements and this, that, and the other. Guess what? You may have some problems. And it's a major problem. And you, you can just because you are part of this system. And you, you are in the, in the middle class aspect of it. We're going to have to get involved with this problem. Again, thank you very much for being with us. See you next week. Take care. Again, it's been a pleasure.